Okay, so as we get set up here, um, we're going we're gonna to shift things a little bit because I think you've seen some really great demos tonight of um, solutions and, and new capabilities within Azure, within the cloud. Uh, what we're going to focus on is really taking it up a level and really looking at it more holistically across the cloud or above the cloud and really talk about how a lot of these solutions and, and um, capabilities you've seen today um, need a model for management, we need a model for governance and compliance and security that potentially spans, goes across multiple clouds and goes across, back into your data centers and your uh, existing legacy infrastructure. So that's what we're going to be kind of shifting that discussion today and we'll um, start with a really brief uh, presentation. So I know we are the last ones to talk today, um, but that means that I, I, uh, I can talk, we can uh, do our demo for as long as we want and we've asked them to uh, Lock the doors so you guys are all stuck here until we're done. Yeah, maybe I can find the presentation. A second. So just as a point of introduction, my name is John Nomoto. I'm the vice president at CGI Federal, um, where I lead the cybersecurity and cloud uh, product management and strategy organization. Um, with me here, who is uh, work dealing with technical issues is Chiru Panuganti. Um, he runs our uh, product management for the Unify 360 hybrid IT management platform that we're actually going to be demonstrating for you today. Okay. There you go. Okay. That's a great picture. <laughs> <laughs> we lost it on the screen there. Okay. All right. So next slide, please. And just a real quick, um, some background. I'm not sure if everybody knows about CGI. Uh, we're actually the fifth largest independent IT business, uh, IT and business process services firm in the world. Um, we have uh, over 70,000 professionals worldwide across five different continents. Uh, within, CG, within the federal market, we are served by 6,000 dedicated professionals uh, located primarily in this area. Um, with over 100 federal customers, and we uh, produce 95% of our projects on time and on budget. So enough about that. We'll go into the next slide. Um, this is uh, just an example of, of many of the customers that we're working with that we've supported through Unify 360 um, to help deliver digital transformation through cloud adoption. And the ones that are highlighted on the top here are actually ones where we're doing this right now in Azure government. And I will uh, actually highlight Veterans Affairs where uh, we're in the midst of a great partnership with Microsoft where um, implementing a massive system there. And at the end of that, it will. Uh, my understanding is that it's going to be the largest implementation within Azure government. Uh, at that time, all using our Unify 360 platform. Um, so, next slide. So, a lot of those customers that I was just showing you, um, they're approaching cloud a little bit differently. If you think about cloud, has traditionally been, and you know, think going back to the earlier parts of this decade, where they were cloud was more around modernizing a new way to modernize infrastructure, right? Taking those kind of lift and shift models of, of, of modernizing the traditional way of delivering infrastructure now in the cloud. But that's shifted now. And, and many of these customers that I showed you are actually using cloud to jumpstart that digital transformation, that journey that they're going to take that actually changes the way that they're fu fundamentally changes the way that they're using cloud to become more of a digital organization, leveraging the cloud native services that are there. But the problem with that is that it's not as easy, right? Because going, going back to the maybe when you were originally lifting and shifting applications, that was maybe a few steps, a few pretty straightforward steps. But if you really want to modernize and change the way an organization runs using cloud services, it does take a lot to get those full benefits out of cloud. And so the approach that we take is that you have to have a proven a methodology to modernize and migrate your systems to the cloud that really takes you from the starting current IT portfolio all the way to a future state that can include Azure and the Azure Stack, for example. But we have a, a very straightforward methodology that applies a, a basic fundamentals around doing upfront assessments, understanding what your current footprint is, what your objectives are from an organizational standpoint, transforming those applications on the way to the cloud. And that's much more than just, again, picking it up and moving it. It may be refactoring it, rehosting it, um, completely redeveloping it, looking at using potential cloud native services or SaaS offerings instead of, instead of the existing application. And then finally, once you get there, you have to manage that system in the, in the cloud or in a multi-cloud environment. And that's that final stage. So what we do is we have an approach that's a methodology plus a, proven t uh, plus a set of tools that we bring to the table as part of that, going through that full process where we take from the assessment stage 
through transformation, and finally to that management stage where we're using our Unify 360 platform for that. And so that's what we're going to be demonstrating to you in a minute. Go to the next slide. Um, but really, the, the central idea is that end of the day, it's you're taking a strategic approach towards some hybrid cloud adoption. If you take an ad hoc one, you end up with this spider web that occurs here. And we know that customers, you know, they're focused on migrating those legacy systems and rationalizing and modernizing them into multi-cloud environments. Um, they want to control that rogue acquisition and portfolio sprawl that you'll see, you know, so this type of spider web that occurs there. But at the same time, they have to secure all of that data, all that information, especially as we start move seeing systems that are moving up into these higher levels of, of data, you know, of, uh, of um, uh, you know, data security that's needed, right? With um, things like PII, PI, PHI information now that you want to use across all of this disparate IT infrastructure. It's very easy to to simply place data where it doesn't belong and isn't properly secured. And end of the day, you also have to have business and IT alignment so that you're using these right services. So with Unify 360. Um, we're able to take you through that full process of access, transform, and manage systems in a hybrid model. We're going to lower your costs and risks by leveraging the optimal cloud services to meet your organizational goals, but doing it in a manner that's secure and compliant and has proper governance across all these clouds. And of course, you heard today a whole, a whole, a whole new set of Azure capabilities, ones that are being introduced in Ignite. How does an organization adopt those, but again, doing that in a governed manner so you have those guide rails that are applied within that organization so they can take advantage of these new cloud services, but do it in a compliant manner. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Chiru, who's going to go into a live demo. Give me a second. Should have done it uh, before. There you go. I just don't want you guys to see my Facebook, that's why I just saw my Facebook. Anyway, so what we're going to be showing, like John said, is a hybrid IT platform. Just imagine you have all these applications, then you migrate this into you know, various clouds, be Azure or Azure. to Azure, Azure Gov Cloud, or the other three-letter clouds. Uh, once you have those you know, uh, workloads running in all these clouds, you're basically managing all of them through this thing called you know, uh, a, a cloud management platform called Unify 360, if you will, right? So this is uh, the platform. It's running actually itself on a cloud. Uh, and then when you log in to the portal, I logged in as myself, as you can see there, Chiru Panaganti, and you know, basically showing me what some kind of announcements that you may have, probably like an application coming up for maintenance, or there is an Azure maintenance coming up, or there's a problem with any specific region in Azure. Uh, it's basically going to show or here uh, in, in in this particular uh, you know announcement section. And this one is essentially what we call as a self service, where you actually can go and provision your resources into multiple clouds. This is uh, the so-called service catalog that is going into multiple clouds here, you know, going into, uh, like I said, you know, AWS or, uh, you know, going into Azure. Here, I, you can see there are actually some service catalogs going into an Azure, which is Azure public cloud or going into Azure stack, right? So it's, it doesn't really matter whatever environment that you have. Uh, once you publish your service catalog, you can actually give this access to your customers or users so that they can actually go and you know provision these resources. All these are customizable. I'm just showing something that is a demonstration, but just imagine you have an agency or a department that you can actually publish a service catalog that is custom you know, uh, access control. So you can see actually this goes on all the way from a pure vanilla you know, machine to a, a LAMP stack for that matter. You know that this is something that you can provision uh, in Azure, a total LAMP stack, right? I mean, you can see there's some service parameters that are exposed. Again, these are all customizable. In this particular case, it's just taking some you know, parameters like, hey, what is the name of your web server, right? What is the, you know, what is the name of your database server? What is the password that you want to use? How many web servers you want to use? 
once you pick, let's say, two web servers in this case, what it does is it really actually goes ahead and also provisions an ELB for all your web servers, right? And then kind of connects them through this ELB so that way you get uh, this, you know, high availability and things like that. But the bottom line, this is all running through your IAC at the back end, right? For example, this one is really powered by your ARM script, right? So, but you really publish only those service parameters that are really relevant for your users here. So that is all about service catalog. And also, again, like I said, self-service, you know, we also pull in something like, you know, where you can actually file an instant, right? I mean, this is actually going and talking to your BMC remedies and service nows or shared wells at the back end. So that way you don't have to go into the portal, service portal, to file a specific service incident or, for that matter, a service request, right? You basically bring all that to, you know, to this unified portal so that way you can stay in this portal and do your business from an ITSM standpoint. Then the second biggest part is the my, you know, the dashboard piece of it where you're actually collating all the information. It's just not enough you kind of provision your, you know, uh, lo workloads into, into these clouds and you also have to start managing when you said managing, managing from the performance standpoint, security management standpoint, inventory management standpoint, and also the financial management standpoint, right? So this is the dashboard that actually brings in all the data from all your environments and puts it in a consolidated and aggregated manner here, right? So what you see here is an aggregated view of your you know, service management view where you can actually see if there are any high impact you know, uh, or you know, breached SLAs. They're being shown here, and the same thing with the service request. And same thing here, actually, let me just call this guy here, so that way you can see a better uh, picture here. So it's showing the inventory management, and you know, actually you can see that's spanning across multiple clouds, including Azure, Azure Stack, and you know, other clouds, and also VMware, right? So this is one view of it. If I scroll down, you're actually seeing the financial management view, where actually you can see an aggregated you know, dollar number from you know, how you're spending your money against you know, a, a, actually a, a budget that you have. And all these reports that you see are, are um, drillable. So I can actually go, for example, this is a status, re status request. I can click on it. This is a status, and then it is basically showing a snapshot of your you know, service request. I can click on it, and then it takes me to the detail page where actually you can see how your service requests are flowing, and you know you can actually go and see, for example, pick a, an earlier date where you can actually see some kind of a trending of your service request, right? How they're flowing, and how you're actually addressing your service requests. Again, across environments, right? It's just not uh, one specific environment. And same way you go into your, uh, if I can go back, yeah, inventory management, you know, you can actually go into how many machines are there in Azure. You can see, uh, you know, by OS, how many machines are Windows, how many machines are, are Linux. I can go into an inventory, for example, I go into um, this particular one, um, and I can see how many machines are there in Azure. I click on this uh, CentOS machine. If I go, scroll down, I mean, it's basically showing me how many machines are there. So it's some kind of a, if you want to call it a vendor management, if you're right, I mean, you know how many workloads you have across these environments and make, you know, some kind of a decisions about that. And similarly, if I go to the financial management, you know, I can just quickly show you. So, like I said, this is, uh, you know, a total budget versus how much money you have spent across environments. I can also go into the cost breakdown by weekly where it will show me how I'm spending. <laughs> I can click on it. Yes. How I'm spending my money on compute network storage, data in transfer, data out, you know, how I'm spending my money across environments, right? This is like a snapshot view of it. Here also I can actually click on, for example, one of these, and then it takes me to the detail page, right, for this, this, this financial management engine where again, you know, the same pattern that it takes you to details and it's showing me how much money I'm spending, you know, in Azure versus, you know, uh, the other providers. And also I can see the cost breakdown weekly, bi-weekly here. And if I scroll down, it's basically showing me how I'm spending my money by service. For example, if I were to come here 
and look for how am I spending my money in Azure services, right? So I just type in that one, and it's showing me how much money I'm spending on Azure storage and compute and you know data in and out, right? And also there is a cost by server, the same thing, right? I mean, if you are really looking at how much money I'm spending by show me by server, and you know these are the Azure machines, and this is the money that I'm spending. And I'm pretty sure you have all used the tags, right, uh, in, in the cloud environment. So now I come here, I have basically tagged all some of these uh, resources based on my application, right? For example, I have uh, an application that I know. Uh, it's named, actually, this is a, a DHS application. showing me that you know there are three applications right there's the name application and the value of three values here but I'm more interested in the DHS app here today so I click on the DHS app you see my now the dashboards have reflected now it's basically telling me there are two machines that you're running your DHS app right maybe it was one web server one database server right or maybe one application one server has both you know the application and uh, you know the database but here is where you actually see, and then if I were to scroll down now, you can see my financial dashboard also is, is changed now. So for this par particular application, you know, you ba basically I've spent about $140, right? I mean, just roughly for this one. And I can go into, you know, this particular machine, right? This is what I'm really wanting to see. And uh, this machine is what here it is, is showing me all the IP address and all that. I click on this hyperlink, it takes me to the little more detailed space. Again, the same you know, pattern here. Uh, it's telling me it's powered, uh, it's, and it has uh, some, you know, all the managed services, be, you know, the, the antivirus patch management, everything is enabled on this machine, um, you know, as part of your B provisioning or uh, as an after fact, but looks like, you know, you basically are all covered over there from a managed services standpoint. And then you and then you see that there is a, a tag called DHS app. You know you can actually change the tag right here, or you know, just you know leave it alone there. And then also you can go into the billing where you know actually you can see uh, your billing trends for this particular machine. And for some reason I say, oh boy, this machine should not be running, right? It should not be burning this much money on a daily basis. Uh, you can go into actions and uh, then say, okay, I really don't want this machine to be running all day long. Uh, I would like to basically have a schedule where you know it just runs only the weekdays or you know like morning eight to in the evening. You can kind of put those schedules and see your you know dollar numbers come down for this machine, probably the next you know in the future. So this is uh, you know essentially how the demo is. I quickly show you something that you might be also interested. Uh, some other uh, application which has a little bit more data. This is another application which has a little bit more data. Uh, this is running in AWS. I click on this one. Uh, again, the same pattern. Uh, then I click on uh, my machine here. Um, it takes me to the detail page where it has a little bit more number of tags here, as you can see, and uh, you know, my billing data here for this particular machine. And also, this one has a uh, little bit more information related to its performance, right? I mean, it's basically showing me my CPU, how I'm consuming memory, and how you know my disk space is being consumed, and all of that. You can do all kinds of uh, you know things like zooming into and then looking at, and if there is an incident, for example, on, on this particular network, you can also go and see you know uh, how much data it is in and out at that particular time. Questions. I can't really, uh, I mean, I know that that was a very complex implementation, but I really can't address the uh, specifics of that in this uh, in this context right now. It was, uh, it was uh, again, it was, um, it was actually spread across multiple cloud providers and multiple infrastructure providers at that time, and then that was how long ago? Through multiple years ago, but there's definitely been advancements in scalability and, and performance of cloud providers, right, you know, since then.
Jiru, you showed uh, you know the service catalog, and then you said you know let's go provision a web server, and uh, behind the behind sort of that service catalog entry there was an ARM template because you're going Correct. to Azure, right? Correct. But then you also had other places that you're going to. You're going to VMware. You're going to other uh, you know. So does the service catalog behind the covers? Uh, you know, it is you know sending a cloud formation template, ARM template. That's that's what you're doing, or are you going with sort of in, you know common language like a like a Terraform or something like that? Right now, it's cloud formation, and you know depending on your particular environment, right? If you're in AWS, it's cloud formation. Azure, it's ARM template. It's VMware, it's CLI. So that's how it is, right? For so, now. So you but expect uh, people who come to Service Catalog, you expect them to come with a pre-baked sort of template intended for the target platform or yeah or we provide them as a service right i mean we can come so and you, you talk code to it them. for them but yes. but but you know you have to know their application to code it for them right it's it's you know so, i might have a complex application right and you know you may not as a service catalog vendor you may not know my all all the constraints and the complexity of my application you, so you'll, I'll have to, somebody has to code that ARM template or cloud formation template. Right, right and, and I think one of the key things there is that generally during that assessment phase, what we'll do is we'll sit down with that organization and say, okay, what are the specific you know parameters that we need to define, you know, from a, a you know cloud formation template standpoint or whatever that is built around their specific you know compliance models, security models, are they having to do this at you know whatever impact level, for example, if it's a DoD agency, defining that as a standard which we then build through, and we use Puppet on the back end to define that configuration, it's standardized through this so that every single time they go to deploy an application, selecting it from that service catalog, it's going to be pushed out with the security controls applied with, with whatever managed services are embedded into that as part of it. And then, of course, we maintain that compliance through the life cycle of that application. So to piggyback that point, I think it would be better if it were Terraform sure. or something else because then you're not limited to having to write specific to that target environment. Uh, for instance, if you were to go to Oracle, Oracle also supports yep, Terraform. Absolutely. Yep. I totally agree. And, and in a multi-cloud environment, that is in multi commercial cloud environment, I think that's ideal um, in many of these cases. And it's, it's an interesting phenomenon where, you know, we talk a lot about, hey, let's, you know, let's do leverage hybrid cloud. Let's take the best of the uh, best of breed across them. But agent, you'll see, you're starting to see agencies largely, you know, congregating around, you know, obviously two large ones, but um, selecting one as kind of, this is the basis for all of the future development for our applications, you know, and if it's Azure, then it doesn't necessarily make sense to develop those in Terraform as we should focus on, you know, the proprietary nature of, of what they're, you know, what's available through them. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, second question, the billing piece. Uh, does the billing piece depend on going through your, uh, your earlier portal, your service catalog? Does it depend on, so those can, so there are two options. We can pull it directly through the, you know, through APIs, calls directly into Azure and pulling that in, billing information. Um, if you want, need to do any, any type of masking of some, you know, elements in there, not exposing the full service catalog, we also have a, a, um, a tool, a tool that's embedded in that that allows you to do more granular billing and, you know, kind of uh, applying, um, you know, some types of premiums to different items depending on how you're doing uh, chargeback models within an organization, for example. If you're really looking for, you know, like a studies catalog specific, you know, billing, Mike then there is a way to there is a way to write bake in. It's all through the tags, right? So a specific service catalog item will have in you know, a specific tag that you could actually bake into your, you know, service parameter or in automation, right? Through automation, then that's how you can actually get your billing per service catalog item. Okay, so it was more along the lines of if someone were to go outside of your service catalog and they built VMs or, or whatever objects, would that get around your, your billing model? Because it seems like if you have the billing and you can pick up these other things. Yeah, yeah discover, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah, there is a way we discover those things. Actually, I couldn't really get to the demonstration of that. So there is a whole you know nine years of discovery thing in this application also where you can actually every day, you can see if there are any rogue machines, right? I mean, the outside of that, this is got you know provisioned, then you'll see all of those. 
and then you can actually bring them to your fold you know, in the sense that you, know, you can actually make sure that it has all those security that is necessary, the billing that is wired up, you know, you're basically bringing it to the so-called unified management, if you will, right? So that is also, we provide that as part of the discovery itself. Or you can actually simply shut it down if you think that is not really a terminate, right? right then. Yeah. And answer your question? Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Any others? It's a great question. Um, so the whole con one of the main concepts behind it is that you're you're abstracting away a lot of the more technical elements from these consoles to some of your non-technical users, right? This would um, an example might be somebody who want, needs to spin up an occasional VM. Maybe they're um, maybe they're a developer, but you don't necessarily want to give them direct access to that console. So you'll define those service catalog items of your standard template for a development environment that has whatever controls and demanded services wired into that. It's kind of more of a manner of, of providing governance within an organization, right? Because we've got approval workflows that can be done based on their security authorization, whatever um, you know, level of seniority they are within an organization. And that, that, you know, that's, a, that's a way to prevent some, and, and get, sure there are certain RBAC controls within the, you know, the Azure portal, um, but you don't necessarily want to expose everything to them and this is really a mechanism for doing that. Well, John, thank you so much you. For, for presenting today. I think we actually had a few final slides on, on the laptop, but it's okay. Um, thank you so much for presenting today. This is great. Thank you for all our speakers um, and for joining our meetup. Uh, our next one in October is uh, featuring women in cybersecurity, so please join us there. And if you have any ideas or whatnot, please... Uh, let me know. It's uh, khomme, H-O-M-M-E, at Microsoft.com. Thank you.